All the young men, they've been rounded up, sent to camps back in the jungle. And people whisper, people double talk. And once their fathers act so humble, all the young girls, they have got the blues. They're heading back to Center 42. Keep it undercover. Keep it all out of sight. Keep it undercover. Keep it all out of sight. Undercover of the night. This is the Community Solutions Podcast. Jason Bradley and Richter deep in the bowels of our underground lair, taking notes and counting votes. Release the Kraken! How you doing? (laughs) Well, I'm doing fine. Uh, I was hoping I could get three in a row. Yeah. But I ain't going to get three in a row. I mean, uh, no. Timberwolves winning streak is what I stop at at two. Yeah. Uh, By the way, by the way... uh, Sources tell me the NBA draft was last night. Now, I know you yes. were watching. Oh no, uh, you were watching. Too. No, oh you were. Who did they take? With the I don't Shaquille know. O'Neal was he? Was he there with Leitner? <laughs> uh, uh, Will the... Chamberlain, I think, is who they drafted. <laughs> oh, it was what the other guy? <laughs> Will Mike and George from the Minneapolis Lakers, <laughs> Elgin Baylor. The, they're celebrating because they finally landed Michael Jordan. Yeah. They've been working on it for decades. Michael Jordan's got to be in his fifties by now. He's yeah. probably still better than everybody except that one Towns guy. I like him. Yeah, but I heard a rumor we got Ricky Rubio back. Is that true? I don't know. Okay. But I'll tell you what, you don't know anything i am not a basketball guy i don't know i used to play basketball is that way west i mean come on jay what do you know <laughs> you used to play basketball you I get did. that bradley hook yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. i had a richter hook but that was in bowling <laughs> <laughs> i have one it's in golf <laughs> yeah <laughs> i've got the uh i got the caddyshack slice yes uh my dad corrected it a little bit but yeah. he gets frustrated and throws a club after watching me in a few times. <laughs> so I know I'm kidding. As long as he doesn't throw it at your head. Well, I duck. Yeah. Uh, but here's the thing. Uh, I don't know who we picked. I, 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 I haven't watched a college basketball game since uh, Duke played Michigan here in uh, the Fab Five against Leitner and Hurley and Grant Hill. I don't think I've watched a college basketball <laughs> game. Actually, I take that back. What year did the Gophers go to the Final Four in the 90s? I, I was know. in college. Beats me. 96, does that sound right? 97? Sure. <laughs> Tell you what, if I was ever in trivial pursuit, I wouldn't want you on my team. <laughs> I'd do just fine. They don't ask any questions about salads, hold the lettuce. I, 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 but let me just say this. Uh, I think it was 97. Yeah. I think it was 97. But um, So we, we don't know. So the Timberwolves had the number one overall pick. They probably picked like some guy that you can't pronounce his name. He's from like Estonia or something. <laughs> Goran Yasnadovic. <laughs> That's probably who they had. Yes. You know, and he, he dominates, he scores fifteen points a game over in Europe. Right. And we scouted him with right. you know extra X ray vision and we he's gonna grow four more inches. I gotta tell you what though. Yeah. Is drafting in sports, we talk a lot these days about science. Is there a more inexact thing than to draft a team in any sport. I think baseball is the hardest because you don't go yeah. straight to the pros. Right. You have to project in three or four years. But we see yeah. we see football teams screw this up. You know, the Ryan Leafs leaves of the world. Yeah. We'll call them the leaves. And, you know, everything looks great on paper. And then, you know, they can't hold their jock when they go to the NFL. So, I mean, it, there's there's just nothing. Nothing's more armchaired. You know, everybody's a, everybody's Mel Kiper nowadays. You know, yes. everybody's that. So, um, so the the good old T wolves. Yeah. I believe Ricky Rubio is back on the team. Uh, ninety six, ninety seven. That's uh, that's the year they went to the final. Four. Oh, so I was that's right with either year. I said right. Yeah. Well, it was well, it was the ninety six, ninety seven team. So ninety seven would be <laughs> when the final four occurred. Yes, uh, losing to Kentucky. I remember that. Okay. Uh, that that's okay. Well, I would rather the. Minnesota win, but Kentucky would be my second team. Yes, I know and you not, got some Kentucky yeah, in you. I do. Yeah. A little bluegrass, a little half, bluegrass in your armpits or something. You got half of me is Kentuckian. Kentucky, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. This is, President so. Lincoln was born there. Don't you know, there's lots of good things about Kentucky. Yeah. Muhammad Ali, right? Isn't he from Louisville? Louisville. 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 You know, in Southern yeah. Missouri, they call Missouri Missouri. You ever yeah. been to Southern Missouri? They call it Missouri. Um, how far south? Yeah, I've gone through Southern Missouri. I'll put it to you this way. Yeah. 
I was in Utah once and I said, oofda. I must have gotten more looks, more crazy looks from people. Uh, that, that's probably the most crazy look. Oofda? What the hell is mm-hmm. that? I'm like, oh, gee, it's right. I'm not in Fargo anymore. So <laughs> they didn't know Oofda. What? So, really? They had no huh. idea. Oofda. I, that's part of yeah, my I, I vernacular put, for sure. They, they're all putting a little salt in their water, yeah, so. too, every, all, all day. <laughs> now, Rubio is back on the Wolves. So it looks is. like they pull off uh, via the Star Tribune, if you can trust them. Uh, Wolves pull off draft night stunner, trade for Ricky Rubio. So. So that's a draft night stunner. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a draft night stunner. Hey, we got the guy that didn't take us to the finals before. Well, now, now yeah. I, I, I thought Ricky has his pluses and minuses. Uh, I think he can fit in nicely mm-hmm. on the team. I just don't think he's a thirty-five minute superstar type player. I right. think he's a role player, yeah. and I think if he is, I think he can excel. In a twenty-something minute a game mm-hmm. role, I just don't think he's going to be a right. part of like a big three that goes right. anywhere. Or, or in, in, in the Timberwolves' case, they haven't had a big three since. Oh. <laughs> I don't even want to speculate on the right. year. Uh, Garnett and somebody, yeah, right? <laughs> I don't even know. Right, so, Garnett, Leitner, uh, <laughs> Easy Rider. Maybe they had Easy yeah. Rider for a while. Jr. Yeah. yeah. Who else? They have that one guy who had to feed the family. What was his name? <laughs> Choked his coach. Sp- yeah, Sprewell. Well. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, man, I, I got to feed the family. I don't know if I can play tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I was thinking about it. Yeah, baseball. I think. Was would be the one of the toughest ones to, oh. to draft for. All the, rugby as well. Yeah, because nobody knows how it works. So. Okay, fine. Lacrosse too. Okay, you know. Uh, but here's the thing: know how lacrosse works. Here's the thing, though. Yes. About I don't understand how rugby works either, because you score a trick or a. a uh, uh. What's the scoring? It, I don't know. See, a see, run. Nobody could ever draft for that Not sport. A run. Well, know. you'd have to draft bigger guys that can move. Uh, that'd be tough to knock on their ass. I mean, that would be who you'd have to pick. But let me just yes. say this: baseball. Let me give, let me give you an idea of how tough baseball is. The current Twins general manager and pres- what they, I can't remember what they call it, presidents of, of operations or something yeah. like that. Be- 2017 was their first season. Mm-hmm. They drafted Royce Lewis. Mm-hmm. He has yet to play a major league game. Right. So how in the world can you judge their drafting when their first pick four years later is, you Still know. The minors. And I mean, yeah. part of it is last year, too. I'm sure that set everybody back. Yeah. But part of it's like, okay, well, I, I don't know if you're any good at this because none of your guys are here yet. <laughs> so we'll see. I mean, most of the guys in the Twins right now were yeah. Terry Ryan guys or even Billy Smith guys. Like Rosario, mm-hmm. Sano, Barrios, Buxton. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were all, if they weren't acquired through free agency, they were all brought up by yeah. by those guys. How, how, do you, how do you think Ron Davis is still pitching down there? Pete nope. Filson, Terry Felton, Scott Klingenbach. You go through those 90s Twins pitchers. You know, okay, all right, so Felton was. Okay. Do you know who Terry Felton is? I'll just get to something in a second. Uh, his, his lifetime record is 0 and 16. Wow. With the, He's like the Pat Putnam of pitching. Yeah, well, he is. Yes. He, in 1982, when the Twins brought up all those guys who eventually became the 87 team, yeah. they were a bad team then. Mm-hmm. And he went 0 and 13 on that team. Oof. So. Yeah. You know, so but we had the uh, you know, we had something to to cheer for anyway. Okay. Okay, the song. Oh, that, yeah. You've, uh, you've stalled long enough. Okay, it was uh Rock Set <laughs> Joyride. <laughs> no. Do I get a quarter you know, of a point? You know better than that. That's a that's the song that you got on repeat on your 8 track. It's yeah. it w, darn right it is <laughs> along with Thriller. <laughs> Thriller, that's redeemable. I'll take that. Yeah, by that Prince. is a correct by answer. Prince, right? yeah. <laughs> really, <laughs> my word. Uh, well, who is it? Wow. Don't keep us waiting any longer. It, it is Undercover of the Night from the Rolling Stones. Oh, I know them. Yeah. What do they sing? I'll think of something. <laughs> what do they sing? All I'll say about the let me say two things about satisfaction. Okay, I get that one. Is one. Um, is that. I have seen a lot of. I don't like halftime shows. Yeah, uh, Super Bowl. I hate it. The only good one I ever saw was was Michael Jackson, and I think that's why we still have it because mm-hmm. nobody could set the bar as high as he could. And he was incredible, and I want to say that was. Yeah. I think I think Prince had a really good halftime show. When did he do it? 
Oh goodness, I don't remember. Jackson did it. You're, Dallas you're Cowboys. Work this My Google Cowboys won today. it that year. My Cowboys. Yeah. So it had to be early '90s when Jackson did it. But that aside, the Rolling Stones put on maybe the worst halftime show. They sounded yeah. like crap. And Mick Jagger, I got. I just got news for you. If you ever wear a shirt again, please don't make it seven sizes too small. <laughs> I don't need to see your hairy back or your butt crack or anything like that. I mean, just he looked like a, a, a he looked like a bum, yeah, like, just like a bum that just slept on a in a gutter for a week. Two thousand seven. Okay. That was uh, Prince? Super Bowl XLI, yeah. Colts beat the Bears 29-17. Didn't it rain that year? Yes. All I know is yes, this, actually, that Michael Jackson did it. I want to say it has to be the Rose Bowl in 93 uh, where the Cowboys whipped the Bills. I liked both teams, but I was always a Cowboy fan. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Except for this year. By the way, by the way, your yeah. Queens... <laughs> I'm going to predict nine wins for your Queens. That's good. You got to look at the schedule. They I still got to, yeah, they, they got Jacksonville. They got oh, Dallas. They yeah. got Detroit again. I mean, they got Tampa Bay and New yeah. Orleans, and I think those would be tough. 1993 Super Bowl XXV. At the Rose Bowl, right? Wasn't that the Rose Bowl? Ah, uh, you're going to make me look that up, too. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. You look that up. Well, I'll, I'll give it to you on a technicality. How about that? Fine. Too lazy. <laughs> Well, I know. Matter. I know the next one when they beat the Bills the next year was in. I want to say that was in Atlanta. So yeah, at the Rose Bowl. There we are. Okay. All right. All right. It's breaking news here in Minnesota. We'll get to the shutdown crap in a minute. Mm-hmm. Two longtime DFL senators have formed the Independent Cockeye. <laughs> um. <laughs> Tom Bach, uh, they're very independent. Up in old Cook County, <laughs> and Senator Dave Salami. <laughs> How do you say that? Tomasoni? Tomasoni? Uh, hold on. Pepperoni? I don't know. I'm what not to say. on the page yet. There don't get there. Oh, there Great. This is well, serious. I'm looking up all your serious, facts. This is serious I'm, I'm, business. I'm sitting here looking up all your your quizzing. Why me did you I'm question Googling. me on a Super Bowl of the Dallas Cowboys one? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, uh, Tom Bach of Cook and Senator Dave Tomasoni of, of the Chisholm. <laughs> Up on the Iron Range. Chisholm is almost as good as what that? What's that one city? Uh, <clears throat> no, uh, Babbitt oh, in Barris? No, it's on the way. Oh. Uh, it's on the way to Duluth off thirty five. Um, ah, damn it! Which I can name just about all of them. I made that trip so many times. Is it north of Hinkley? Yes. Askov and Finlayson. Finlayson. Finlayson, yeah. Yeah, but I have it my own name. Oh, okay. Finlayson. That's what I call it. It's funny. I knew which one you were talking about. I mean, that's as funny. Finlayson and Chisholm is about as funny as a preacher named Oral. All right. Now, Jay, let me just yes. say this. They are now, I, I don't know this officially, so the Senate will be technically... 34 to 31 to 2. Mm-hmm. Now, I can't believe that Gazelka and the Republic. Okay, this is why I'm in an independent now. And both parties just drive me crazy. One more than the other, but yes. Well, yes, yes, but still, that's why party politics is something I just can't stand. Okay. Probably one of the reasons I've fallen in love with local stuff because it's not about labels on people. And but if you are Paul Gazelka and, and I am not because I have hair, um, <laughs> how in the world could you put these two in charge of any committee, especially a very important one? There's not many unimportant ones. All right. Let's just be blunt here. Um, there's some that have a little more prestige yeah. than others. But how do you, after they defeated, quote-unquote, your guys or gals, mm-hmm. then they, they Tom Bach used to be the leader of the DFLers. That's like Chuck Schumer deciding he's going to be independent. And, uh, and that, that's McConnell, like, like Bernie Sanders is an independent. Yeah, or yeah. the other guy in Maine. What's his name? King? Yeah. I mean, that's like them. And we're going to, okay. You're now independent. And the first guy who started this crap was that Jim Jeffords guy. Yeah. Um, and so you're now going to give them major chairmanships 
a day or two late. Now, look, again, this was in the works for a long time. Yeah. The idea that this just sprang, Channel 5's acting like this, they just had, you know, breakfast yesterday and yeah. discussed this. No, they didn't. They discussed this months ago. Yeah. Tom Bach was beat by Susan Kent two years ago, and he's been negotiating with Gazelka ever since. I'm yeah. sorry, but it's true. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, these two aren't going to sit and caucus with the Democrats just because they have an I next to their name. Well, I'll tell they're, you they're what. They're not going to come over and help the Republicans. They're trying to save their own skin. Okay, they, they know. They, they think this is going to pay off in redistricting? No, it's no. not going to pay off in redistricting. What it's no. going to pay off in is getting certain bills, their pet stuff, through a certain committee. And I'll tell you what. I wouldn't trust them. But here's the other thing. You can, you can give them this. If you stack these committees with Republicans, if you yeah. stack it 10 to 5, fine. You know, Tom Bach wants to be the chair of the some committee. I wouldn't put him on the janitorial committee. I wouldn't either, but that's just me. Yes. Now, the other guy, Salami, I looked at his <laughs> voting record, Lovely. and it's been misconstrued. Uh, yes. He does vote, um, quote-unquote, with the Republicans... Maybe a third of the time. However, the key votes are the most important. Yeah, he goes along with the Republicans on mining and supporting police and stuff like that. But of course he does. But yes. the big issues it's from Chisel. He's voted down the line Democrat on almost all of them. Uh-huh. Bach even to a greater extent. Yeah. So this idea that they're these two are not Colin Peterson, no. okay? They're not even Colin Peterson's grand nephew, okay? So the idea that that why in the world would you agree to this? How demoralizing yeah. can it be to? I mean, who are the chairs of this now? <laughs> I, that's what I'd like to find out. I'd like to be at that meeting. Hey, by the way, uh, we're gonna suck up to. So the guy from Shilom. So you're out as the committee chair of, of yeah. blah blah blah. You know, and how you know, I just I I I can't believe I think, put it to you this way. When you saw some Republicans break off mm -hmm. from Kurt, I have no doubt. Did the Democrats sit down and, and give them anything for doing that? No. But that's because <laughs> the Republicans that did that were sick and tired of what the Republicans were doing. Uh, well, I just, I'm... So, I mean, they did that willingly. This was a political move, pure and simple, uh, uh, which I'm sick and tired of. I tell you, folks, St. Paul, there's one party. There just is one party. Yeah. The, actually, I take the back. There's one and a half. It's a swamp There's party. big government, and there's got. big government uh, light. Those are the two parties. <laughs> and I just, I, I'm just... Stun and I, I love how the media spins this as to moderates. You know, and I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. One thing that I, that is concerning, though, is redistricting. Because yes. you're going to go back to, we're going to have the really red areas, and the really blue areas. Mm -hmm. And you know what those representatives are worried about? A primary challenge. Yeah, absolutely. They're not worried about no. winning in November. They're worried that they're not extreme yeah. enough. Yep. So that lends itself to more of the the inability to... It gets more extreme in Minneapolis and St. Paul, mm -hmm. which it gets every waking minute. Yep. And it gets more the other way. I mean, the Democrats basically are, are the majority in this state in about four counties. Yes. Or maybe eight Okay, out of yeah. eighty-seven. So I mean, I I just I, I'm just stunned that this was agreed to, and I I cannot believe that that this that you know if they want to break off from the deal, you let them go hang themselves. That's Absolutely. not that's not our prop their problem. Yeah, I'm saying our no, it's there. I it's it's it just mm. isn't. And I just, if I were a Republican senator, I would be. Livid, yeah. I'd go shine Gazelka's head with with paint thinner if this if this happened. I'd be so upset. So, <laughs> all right, Jay. One more thing here before yeah. we get to Governor Knucklebrains. <laughs> the city of Minneapolis. Yes, boy. I'll tell you what. It just gets gooder and gooder and gooder, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I'm so happy for that imaginary fence that sits between where we're at and where they're at. 
I'd like uh, that. I'd like that imaginary fence to be real. <clears throat> I wouldn't mind it. Where's the checkpoints dam- included? <laughs> Where's the damn story? Yeah. I just sent it to you earlier. Oh, here it is. Oh. From Fox9.com, Minneapolis yeah. leaders to announce programming to support business owners of color. Uh, whites need not apply, I guess. Pieces to begin with. Minneapolis leaders announce a new program to support businesses, owners of color, and those impacted by the summer's civil unrest. Mayor Amber Fry, Jacob Fry, <coughs> City Council Vice President Andrea Jenkins, is that one of the he she's? Uh, in council, it doesn't matter. Council member, L- L- oh, hell, oh, boy. I think it might be. <laughs> Liana Palzanio joined members of the Minneapolis Forward Community Now Coalition. Oh, boy. Business leaders, blah, 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 doesn't matter. Linnea Palmasano. Right, that's what I said. Okay. Through the program, the city would invest, invest Mm -hmm. $1.2 million in funding from the 2021 budget to community businesses. So what does this mean? They're going to buy stock in in small businesses now? Hmm. So where's that? Where does that? Where do we get that? Where do Minneapolis taxpayers sign up for, to put that in their four hundred one k or what? Are, are Minneapolis taxpayers on the hook? These businesses fail. I don't think so. Oh, of course uh, not. The government's <laughs> exempt from their own rules. Right. You know they're all Gavin Newsom's. So I mean, what does this mean? Invest. In businesses, the program would serve an estimated 200 to 250 Minneapolis businesses. Now, here's the kicker. Helping realize $1.5 million annually in energy savings and decreasing the long-term cost to business owners in environmental justice communities. What the hell is that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Well, of course you're glad I asked. <laughs> I only ask good. I only ask good questions. Right. So, environmental justice. Uh, that's another one of those lovely, you know, Marxist things yeah. that they they've come up with. Uh, it. Um, it's actually pretty old. Uh, since like the 1980s, it's been around. But um, more. You know, it, it's kind of evolved over time, like from what, it, you know, it used to be kind of like about... like evolution? Yeah, it, it used to <laughs> Went be... Went from a monkey, a chimpanzee right. to... A- <laughs> right. It, it's it's kind of like, uh, you know, the, two uh, two monkeys collided and over a billion years a human walked out. It's, a, it's ridiculous. It slipped on a banana. Uh, I don't know. All right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so it... Of course, it, you know, it's a social movement because all good movements... You know, these days are are social. Uh, <clears throat> so they all got together. They're not supposed to gather in groups of more than ten, by the way. Yeah, no. That well, I don't know. Uh, so it focuses on the fair distribution of environmental benefits and burdens. So environmental benefits you think of like being able to get to parks and all that kind of stuff uh the burdens you think about how co2 uh affects poorer countries more than it does richer countries you think about how oh the jay you can't even say this with a straight face no i can't uh the u.s is a bad country because we're energy independent we should be sharing more with other countries and you know they can have all the carbon they want from us although we shouldn't be sharing on the other hand because we should cut off all the pipelines because it's destroying the native communities in north dakota and so it it it, they, they it's a movement where nobody really agrees with each other other than you got to burn the whole thing down you know it's but what's that got to do with businesses in minneapolis i mean i mean how are they how are they going to make a profit which i assume they have to do right and worry well, about environmental justice well the businesses are worried about making a profit the government doesn't care yeah. So my guess is this is conditional money with a whole bunch of, okay, you need to get free money, but you're going to put in a, a CO2 reducer at the front door or something. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, you know, they're going to have... Everything comes with 
strings. Yeah. We all know that. Right. Well, I mean, there are building standards, and a lot of these businesses are probably ones that were destroyed in the riots. And so as they build back, they're going to have to build back per the, the building requirements. They'll be back to lead standards and yeah. things like yeah. that, probably. So, you know, bills, or it wouldn't be bills, bulbs. it would be like Jose's super mercado, you know, on Lake Street is going to have to be lead standard. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Yeah, they're not going to be allowed to have a drive-through. How's that working? Right yeah, now? yeah, exactly. No drive-throughs. So yeah, have to be, they'll be going... walkable, walkable businesses. Yeah, you know, not non-walkable businesses, whatever that is. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, increased parking for bicycles and charging stations. Yeah. Things so like that. there's a lot of that. Um, there's always long lines in those charging stations. Yeah. I'll tell you. Yeah, it, it back in the first paragraph of this uh, article it says that this program is to support business owners of color and those impacted by the summer civil unrest so they are specifically looking at a lot of those businesses that were destroyed and they will make them build back with environmental protection right they won't be grandfathered into anything no um there were more than 200 businesses, by the way, yes. that got their arses kicked by this. Well, they're going to help 200 to 250. So, so how are they going to pick and choose? How do you pick? See, that's that's the problem with yeah. this. If, if if a business succeeds or fails out in the free market, you can't run to government to bail them all out because then how do you? You're creating mm-hmm. a cluster blank right there. You're creating a situation beyond uh, anybody's mm-hmm. control. Yeah, and and you know how much you're going to give each business. Um, what are you going to give them money for? Is it just to get back on their feet? Is it to just to put in these environmental protections? Is it to just you know give them a little seed money so they can get rolling again? I I don't know. I mean, this is what is so difficult. And but again, no matter how you do it, it's not fair because if you aid one business and you don't aid the next, you're yeah. picking winners and losers out in the marketplace. Although, uh, of course, Minneapolis has been doing this for years. So, <laughs> all right. Although I, I could make a case that any any business that was harmed during the riots, that maybe the government should get it back on its feet and get it rolling via the takings clause in the Constitution. Since the, I would say Minneapolis uh, City Council's personally responsible for all of the damage, and since the government took that away from them, they kind of owe it to give it back to the, the community. I, I would add the governor in that as well, who did yeah. a horrible job during that time. Horrible. Continues He's the to Andrew do, Cuomo of Minnesota, con, for con, sure. And continues to do a horrible job. Yeah. Uh, continues to be an embarrassment to the state. Uh, but I'm glad we're not doing this show yesterday. Because yesterday, mm-hmm. I, 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 I mean, you might have had to get your beeper out. <laughs> and I know, you know... I, I try to be respectful on this show. I try not to. Uh, it's a family show, really. Well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, occasionally I, I let uh, let uh-huh. a few words slip. Um, I try not to do that. But look, you know, everything's about passion, Jay. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, if if you don't have look, I don't know how many people that I've consulted and you've consulted. I'm going on my 19th year in this business. Yeah. Okay. And hard work. Passion and principles. Mm-hmm. If you've got those three things, the sky. And I feel that way in life as well. Okay, yeah. it's certain people who. It doesn't have to be politics. It can be business. It can be teaching. It can be medicine. It can be uh, trash collecting. It doesn't matter. Right. If you have passion, principles, and you work hard, uh, getting your education, whatever that is. Goal orientated or oriented, whatever part of America you're from, mm-hmm. you have a limitless ceiling. Yes. Okay. So when I get fired up and you get fired up, you got to understand how how you know, from the heart this stuff can be sometimes. Yeah. And I'm going to be a, a little personal on this on this show. I went through hell mm-hmm. in March, April, and May. Okay, my wife and I both had COVID back then. I had no symptoms. My wife had a tough time. She works in long-term care. <clears throat> okay, and um, lucky for me, I still have the antibodies. I was tested last week. Uh, That's good. Yes, and I do donate them. So I do do uh, my share as far as I'm concerned. But I can't, 
personally go through this hell again. Mm-hmm. And I'm about to go through this hell. I lost a ton yep. of income. Me I'm gonna, too. I'm gonna, yeah, and I'm going to come on the show, and, and I'm going to estimate it was about $5,000 that I personally lost Oof. because of losing one of my jobs during that time mm-hmm. in the bar and, and yep. industry. Um, and I was cut off with no warning, with no nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, and the same thing just happened yet again. Yes. Um, and I personally am just not willing to go through this another time. Yeah, me either, you know. And uh, I, I just, I can't grasp this governor's thinking. Mm-hmm. I don't want to, first of all. I hate looking at him. I hate listening to him. Um, he certainly doesn't look like any kind of long-distance runner, no offense. Neither do I. But I, I, I cannot get how he can do this a second time. I cannot get well, how the legislature, either side, I don't like either right now, lets him do it. Mm-hmm. He says he's listening. I think he's been in such a bubble for the last nine months. I think he's listening to like four people. Mm, maybe. And I can chart but- where these people have been wrong and wrong. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to relive it. No. I think you and I don't agree on who he's listening to, but... <laughs> well, I think he's listening to that one guy who's now with Biden. Yeah. That Oster... He's probably Oster listening to him. Octopus guy who hasn't been right yet. And octopus. I, you could document where he's Dr. been wrong octopus. Yes. every single step of the way. What's his name? Dr. Octopus. Osterholm? I don't know. He's listening to Jan Malcolm, who is not a doctor, is a political hack. Mm-hmm. She has no experience in this at all. Well, he may be listening to her. She may be more of a mouthpiece than anything. She may be. Um, and quite frankly, I think he's listening to the nurses' unions. And look, I have all the respect in the world for nurses. Mm-hmm. They're going, they are going through a tough time, no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. But we've had nine months now, eight months, to prepare for an uptick and we knew it was coming well, I, okay. I, I told everybody on this show when we were going through the first round of this there will be an uptick right but but again how are we not prepped for this we had two hospitals closed mm-hmm. right under the first shutdown mm-hmm. we had healthcare people being laid off yeah in april and may Okay, and remember when you look, when you talk about ICU and you talk about hospitals, you're not just talking about COVID patients, right? I think there's a misconception. You have heart that patients, you have stroke patients, you have people that are having other operations, broken bones, broken bones, babies being born, you're right? Uh, <sighs> any number of reasons yeah. anybody could be in the hospital. They don't talk about discharges either. They never talk about that. All right. Uh, one of the interesting things that I look up every day is how many people are off isolation in mm-hmm. COVID. And I'm just going to give you a statistic today. Um, I'll thank uh, a guy from NPR, Brian Bast, who does this every single day. He actually has a fairly informative Twitter page. Wow, he's he's the one over at NPR. Him and David Montgomery, who's the stat guy over okay. there. Now, David is a... Uh, he doesn't show his politics, but I think he's frames too many things negatively. But he does good work as far as numbers are concerned. Okay. We have have had about 250,000 positive cases, which we know is a lie. It's probably more like yeah. 2 million. 198,000 of them have recovered. Hmm. 3,000 have died. So the actual case number mm-hmm. that is out there is about 46, 47,000. Okay. Now, most of those people are at home, isolating, recovering mm-hmm. in some stage of recovery. Yeah. Maybe they're asymptomatic, too, because you could get a positive test. Yeah. You know, and that doesn't mean that you're in the hospital. So it's interesting to look at that. And, and that's a number never talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact... I'll just give you another statistic real quick. Where did I see this? I'll find it. Just sing or something, Jay, and I'll find it. Just sing. Yeah. All right. 
Oh, yeah, okay, but, I got yeah, it. Okay. Don't sing. All right. Yesterday, this is Wednesday the 18th, 5,102 positive cases, 7,189 people recovered. So we had a net gain of 2,000 more people recovered than tested positive. Hmm. Something, again, you'll never see Walls talk about. You will never see right. anybody in the news bring that up. The only other person who I've seen do it is Tom Hauser from Channel 5, mm -hmm. who, who's the only other person I've seen do that. Yeah. Now, I, I mentioned going through this a second time. Can I ask a dumb question? How in the world in eight months can we only build up a few hospital beds? It's like a thousand we've built in the entire state. Well, and, and especially, I mean, when you go back to the first shutdown, right? Give us two weeks. Right, I was going to mention that. Yeah. Give us two weeks so we can get our hospitals ready, get enough beds ready. You don't have enough ready? I mean, we've been talking about a second wave of this since the first wave hit. Haven't you looked at the other states and seen what's happened, too? Texas went through this. Yeah. Florida went through this. Yeah. Florida, now everything's open. Right. <laughs> they went, I mean, but here's the other thing. We've got schools closed. We've got mm -hmm. community centers closed. We've got a lot of buildings not being used right now. Yeah. We've got sports stadiums. Mm -hmm. Why can't they be turned into makeshift hospitals? And I'm going to add one more thing. Yes. If we have a staffing issue... Why does everybody have to be like a registered nurse or a doctor? Hmm. For example, I mean, you think back to volunteers like during World War One, World War right. II. They weren't all licensed by some no. board somewhere. Hey, look, if I if I I would volunteer, and I'm sincere about this, mm -hmm. I would volunteer some of my time because I already had this. I don't fear it. I would go down there and help people. I mean, I'd still wear protective stuff and all that to help people who are recovering. Mm -hmm. If they need me to give me their Zoloft, give them their Zoloft or their hemorrhoid cream or whatever, I'd gladly bring it to them. Okay? Hemorrhoid cream might be crossing a line. I didn't. <laughs> Not applying yeah. it. Okay? Oh, well, <laughs> that, that is a different uh, yeah, job. Hey. That, there's a different pay grade. Don't put, for that, that. Just put that figure in your mouth. You don't know where that figure's been. <laughs> Was that from airplane? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, but my point being that, yes. that why can't we have volunteers or churches mm -hmm. or things like they volunteer for why can't they help take care of people yeah i can hand somebody their medication i can fluff their pillow i can um you know a lot of people are there they're some of them are in serious condition some of them aren't mm -hmm. why can't they all why can't we come why, that's coming together for me yeah. not not saying, well, the doctors and nurses tell me to do this, so I'm going to go out there and do it. Yes. You know, that's not listening to everybody. It's not worrying about everybody. I mean, there's no science behind this. Tell me, tell me back in May, okay? Mm -hmm. First off, this has been political since day one. Yes. We're going to have a two-week shutdown in March. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. He knew it was, that was a lie, but yeah. he also knew that coming out and saying three months... It was not going to fly. Right. So it was to be then, well, you know, we did we did a model and a couple of college kids, you know, put something together. Uh, well, I got to extend it. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to let you golf now. So I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to yeah. open back up. You can right. go golfing. You can sell shampoo curbside now. <laughs> okay. We were, we're, we're, you know, I mean, we got, we got paper cut to death. Yes. Okay, and the same thing's happening now. Do you think, you think in four weeks, you think in four weeks, anything is going to be re- I mean, no, anything. No, there's going to be more shutdowns. Public down. bathrooms won't be opened in four weeks. I think they're going to get more restrictive. I think a stay-at-home order will come again. Yes. Walls is trying to figure mm -hmm. out how, how he there. can scare enough people mm -hmm. into doing it. Because, I mean, basically, we're in a stay-at-home order again. Yeah. Can't go anywhere, so- Right. It's basically that. You can that. go to the mall. Yeah, okay. I can go to the mall and buy whatever. What do you buy at the go mall? Go to the mall, nowadays? go to Target. Buy underwear. Yeah. Okay, fine. Um, so, which is strange that all the malls are open and all yeah. that. I guess you can't get anything there, I guess, apparently. You know? But that, that just brings up the question of calling this a pause. Mm -hmm. Now, Walls knows he's being dishonest. Oh, yeah. By the way, there were rumors of a mid-November shutdown in October. Yes, there were. 
So that tell now that those rumors didn't come from nobody, and even Hospitality Minnesota actually put it out on their Facebook page mm-hmm. uh, about um, about the governor talking about mm-hmm. this, and he yesterday denied that he did that, <laughs> which we all know is baloney. We know that's mm-hmm. a lie. I mean, come on here. He thinks we're idiots. Well, I mean, he, I mean I, just. Every, all of it has been political. Look, in May, people were dying left and right, yet we were reopening the economy, right. and I know why. He couldn't sustain it politically anymore. Right. The federal money ran out. The churches were ready to take him to court. The churches were going to open They were anyway. going to open, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, and I, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure courts are the best place for this either. I yeah. think we need to change the law is, is really right. the answer. But, you know, so... But I want to talk, Jay, specifically about something that happened last week. And once again, the mainstream media completely missed this, didn't even look at it. I doubt anybody there has even read it. Mm-hmm. Okay? Executive Order 20 2020-96. Just think, 96 executive. Actually, it's now yes. 99. In less than a year. In eight months. I yep. mean, that's like an executive order every two days yeah. or three days. Okay, but this executive order, this is all on gatherings of 10 or more, which are, quote-unquote, prohibited. Yes. They're prohibited now. <clears throat> that this order mm-hmm. empowers sit- the attorney general, city and county attorneys to prosecute not only the act, but the discussion of an act. Yes. So your words now are going to be treated as a crime. But don't tell me this isn't going to happen. Thought police. When 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 bars threatened to reopen in May, mm-hmm. they were gone after. Yes. By this by this racist piece of garbage attorney general we have. And so don't tell me this isn't going to happen. So thinking about mm-hmm. it, possibly Talking about it yes. is now a crime. Yes. So, um, and I would like to know how, I'd like to know, I'd like to ask Channel 5, Channel 9, Channel 4, MPR, how many county attorneys have you interviewed about whether this, they're going to, they have the power now they do. to enforce this. And of course, I would say everything with Tim Walls, everything is indefinite. Yes. You know, there's no, yeah, four weeks. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Um, go back and look at the stay-at-home orders and tell me, tell me that 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 means anything. I think, yeah, uh, four weeks is also. They're going to have to vote on on his extension of powers again. That's exactly. Why, that's yeah. why it's that's why he can't do it longer. Because, right. Yeah. You know. So they can't. How many county attorneys do you think have been interviewed by the mainstream media around here? Zero. I tried googling it, YouTubing it. Mm-hmm. I did everything bling. I did everything I could think of, Jay, bling. to look at a, any. Yes. I can't find a county attorney who's even made a statement on this. Mm. And city attorneys are unelected, hired by, many of them are hired by a law firm that rents out a lawyer on a per hour basis. Right. So a city attorney is kind of a misnomer. But the idea they are empowered now? To prosecute? Yeah. That's that's ridiculous. So Mackenzie Brackman uh, is is law firm mm-hmm. can send out Harry Hamlin or Corbin Burnson or somebody as a city Matt attorney. Lock, yeah. yeah, whatever, Madlock. <laughs> um, anything about lawyers. <laughs> when you got Law and Order, McCoy <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> they can send out anybody. <laughs> Who now has the authority under this executive order to prosecute people's thoughts as well as their actions. Mm -hmm. But I can't find a statement. I can't find, say, hey, look, don't worry. Mm -hmm. My office is not going to do anything like this. We are encouraging you not to gather in a group of 50 for Thanksgiving. But we're not going to. The first time we shut down, it was like, well, we don't want to have to prosecute. And, it's you the know, code it's language. Be, We're back to the code be, language. It's going to be more educational. They're not saying that this time. No. <laughs> no, that's not there. That language is not there. We're, it's like... Y'all know better, and we're going to scuff you and stuff you if we even hear somebody's, about it. Somebody's going to be made an example of. But I'm telling you, this, uh, the, whoever it is, you need to get in touch 
with an attorney right away that is willing to take this to the Supreme Court because this is a First Amendment violation and it will not stand. All of them are First Amendment violations. Uh, but especially when you are talking, I mean, the church stuff, on top of now you can't even talk about violating it. <laughs> yeah. Freedom uh, of speech. Yeah, I mean. freedom of speech is gone. <laughs> I, we don't have a First Amendment anymore. You no, can't associate. Don't. You can't congregate. Uh, freedom of the press doesn't exist. Well, how about I, how about how about what goes on on social media, where certain things are censored and th- certain things aren't? Yeah. You know, I mean, you go back to freedom of speech as well. Mm-hmm. You have the freedom to be wrong, right? You have the freedom to be an idiot. That's no, not. No, granted, that's a private company, but they get special protections yes. and those need to be taken away. Yeah, I mean, and I don't see that happening, but I wish well. it would happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, the thought, I mean, that's like saying, I think I'm going to speed tomorrow, and then I actually, I can get prosecuted, not for speeding, yes. but for thinking about it. Thinking about it, or even saying, you know what, I feel like going for a drive, and I'm going to go 100 miles an hour. Well, do I go out and do it? I don't know, but now I'm going to get prosecuted because I talked about it. I can think of about a million rap songs that could be yeah. uh, could be used as this, oh, too. Yeah. And I I'm can't drive 55. That. You better not come to this state, Sammy Hager. Yeah, I'm going to blank that, <laughs> kill that, oh. blah, blah, blah. I mean, yeah. talk about, I mean, if that's, holy cow, the can of worms. But I, I almost want to see this tested. I mean, I almost want yeah. to see it. I mean, the problem is... Maybe up, we should be the guinea pigs. Maybe, up, should we put out a tweet right now saying, <laughs> hey, big party at our house? <laughs> your house, though, yeah. your house. I'll tell you what, though. Yeah. To get to the Supreme Court's going to take a while. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be this going to be long gone before it ever gets there. And you may even have... I mean, I'm even going to go out well, Maybe I can get some of my money back from all the gigs I've lost. <laughs> from the, those didn't come back. You may have been able to go back to work. I haven't been able to go back to work. I don't know that it'll come back a second time. Yeah, I don't know either. And I'll tell you what. Yeah. Um, Walls really does a great job of blaming others. Mm-hmm. He keeps telling Congress they need to bail the state out more the state already got billions of dollars first off yeah second off a bailout is the worst thing that could happen right now because it guarantees these shutdowns will last longer yeah right if there's no bailout money coming he almost can't sustain this right and it was like i said in june it was all political too people were just going to go outside they were going to do what they want they shut down for a while they agreed to it but there was a limit as to how much they were going to do it. He lost control of it. Mm-hmm. Let's just be honest here. Right. He didn't. Ex- I mean, I saw an interview with him where he, he complained that he should have extended the stay-at-home order longer. But oh. no one was listening to you anyway. Right. It, 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 he seems to have a very short memory. Everybody stopped listening to him, and <laughs> <laughs> they were just going everywhere, anyways. Well, and, and I mean, let me just yeah. say something too. I mean, is there the possibility of opening back up? I've circled December 18th on my calendar, believe me. Yeah. And actually, it's December 15th because four weeks. No, it's not because it goes from this Saturday. I'm sorry. So December 18th. Now, I've circled it on my calendar. Mm-hmm. What if we reopen? Can he shut us down a third time? Why not? As long as he still has the emergency powers? Sure. Why, why couldn't he? I... Uh, this can go on forever, and it, if they, you know, the uh, vaccine comes out, they could still find a reason to do it. Oh, there's still 5% of people who, who could get this, or maybe it's something else. Maybe it's the riots in the street where, oh, we can't, we can't take The them. riots aren't banned. No, the riots aren't banned, but selling things, having your stores open, coming out of your houses could be. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm just saying, uh, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I'm saying they can find a reason for anything. Yeah, but at it's, this point. it's already been implied. They're already implying that without saying it. Right. I, I don't know. I just, I'm just curious. I want to hear from some county attorneys and city attorneys. I mean, that what is their plan for this? They are empowered by this executive order to be able to, like I said, <clears throat> break up any gathering of more than 10 people. Yeah. Uh, 10 people or more. You know, they can all be 10 people who've already had COVID. 
right. and they can't get together. So I want to know who is going to go along with this. Who's going to test it? Who's going to say, no, I'm not going to do it? Mm-hmm. Can the attorney general's office overrule that? They could make a state case out of something, not a county case. Yeah. I, if I'm reading this right, any of them can bring the charges. Any of the three. Yes. So, um, so when Walls sits there, oh, well, you know what? Look, I'm not going to go knock on your door and break up your Thanksgiving party. Yeah, I know. You're letting the attorney general sitting and county attorneys do that. Yes. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's what's happening. How about our sheriffs? I mean, you know, the constitutional sheriffs that we, we've talked about before but don't have any. Uh, you know, I mean, law enforcement has to. Yeah. In a lot of, of, of rural Minnesota, they don't have police departments. Mm-hmm. The sheriff's office is the main law of enforcement agency. Yes. So where do they stand? I mean, the sheriff is an elected official. I mean, where, yeah. you know, we That's went, why it's so important to have a good sheriff. We went through this in Anoka County, that they yeah. were not going to... They were recommending people wear masks, yep. but they were not going to arrest people for not doing it. Well, and, and this is where I think they get around it, though. I mean... Th- Sheriff's not going to go out and, and make an arrest or, or write a ticket. doesn't matter. You call it into the tip line, and Keith Ellison can prosecute. You've got neighbors spying on one another and saying, hey, you know, so-and-so is not There's three cars line. in that driveway. Yeah. You know, and, and so, you know, city, county, or... You know, Keith Ellison himself can bring prosecution without there ever being a sheriff or a police officer sent out there to check on that. So if I so if I tweet, I'm having 12 people over for Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. I'm not. My wife's actually working for the extra money. Yeah. But I, I, I'm having 12 people over Thanksgiving at Keith Ellison. Go blank yes. yourself. <laughs> he can take that. and yeah. You're threatening to break the... Yeah. You're wow. threatening to violate the Where's Eric the, the Cardall? Order. I need him over here. Yeah. I've, <laughs> I, wow. I mean, that's... That's the way I read it. That's incredible. Now, I'm no lawyer, but that's the way I read that. Yeah, but neither are the people on the Supreme Court, especially in Minnesota. Well, there is that. They might have a law degree, but they're not lawyers. One of them can catch footballs real good. No, he's a sack guy. <laughs> right? I don't, I don't think Paige is still there. Is Paige still I there? I think he's still there. Okay. Well, if it gets to the Supreme Court, I think, I think, in fact, I actually think you may see some surprises on that as far as the votes. I don't know that that would go down party lines. I think you might see a larger majority because I, I got to believe that <clears throat> um, from a law point mm-hmm. of view, thoughts and actions aren't the same. Right. Now, it depends. There are exceptions to that. Mm-hmm. If I encourage you to go out and kill somebody, okay, that's not protected speech right okay you know if i if i you know uh yell the famous yell fire in a crowded theater um but i can't believe that that talking about having people over at your house is going to fly i can't believe it would fly anywhere but i think it would on some places but no way in the supreme court does that fly i mean there's no way no chance of it but again, by the time a case gets to the Supreme, you know, goes to circuit court and all that, you're talking 2022 yeah. before they rule on that. I mean, they're still doing Obamacare ruling. I guess. So I, ten, I, <laughs> from ten and a half years ago. Yeah. So much. <laughs> <laughs> I think it goes deeper than this, unfortunately. And I think that a lot of these um, shutdowns are coming because they they anticipate that Biden's you know won the election um, and all of that, and and there is more freedom. Uh, but I think that they're all working together. You like you said, uh, the one guy from Minnesota went to go work on his COVID team. Yeah, uh, yeah. Biden supposedly was not for a shutdown. He's put together yeah. a group of people who all favor shutdowns. Right, and so you've got Minnesota shutting down. You've got Michigan shutting down, and she's set to get impeached yeah uh, i saw that yeah, yeah. you've got new, you know, soon new york and california and i'm sure jb pritzker in illinois is you know if they're not there yet they but it's be. interesting how different governors have handled this uh there's was a lot of pressure on mike dewine to do this and he's yeah. refused to shut down in right. fact he tweeted out why we can't do that yeah. uh same thing in north dakota i can't think of the guy's name but um 
he wouldn't shut down sports. He wouldn't, yeah. and he went on and on about why. Um, of course, you have Christy Noem in South Dakota, who has sent out guidelines but will not uh, legislate as a governor. You've yeah. got, um, I can't think of every governor's name, but you've got uh, a lot of states not, not doing a mask mandate, mm-hmm. not doing things like that. So you do have a variety of things. But once again, we're seeing the same people from before. Yeah. You know, <laughs> And, and of course, Walls, he's a follower. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, when I saw him teleconferencing with with the governor of Michigan, I thought, oh, boy, here we go. Yeah. Well, maybe he can get impeached, too. Well, it won't go anywhere in this state. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> um, so here's the thing. I believe that Walls is, is communicating with these people. And I believe that there is work going on then with the Biden campaign, especially because, you know, one of these guys went to the Biden campaign. But it doesn't stop there. I think it goes deeper than that. I, I'm not being conspiratorial. This is just stuff that I see out in front of me. <laughs> yes. Out in front of me. I mean, this, this is Biden. Uh, his what was his uh, campaign slogan? I don't know. Build back better, right? Oh, it wasn't. I'm stupid. Anyways, uh, this is from the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. More than 50 global leaders pledged to build back better with the circular economy. So there is a movement globally to build back better. Uh, well, well, remember the Prime Minister of Canada got caught last month saying that uh, this COVID was, an, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, an opportunity yes. to... I don't know if he used the words "build back better," but no, he used the word "great reset" yeah. or yeah, yeah right. to reset uh, economically and stuff. And that's where I'm headed with this and um, social justice and all that stuff. Yeah. So, um, do you think Biden even knows he's being used? I mean, I never thought. I, no. I don't think. I don't. You know, I question no. whether he knows it's Thursday. It, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no. In, in fact, the word of "build back better" sounds like a new concept, but it's a con. But it, this is common sense to the Japanese people, and Shinzo Abe was in on that. A uh, number of other different UN leaders and things have, have glommed on to this. Uh, there, here's a... a uh, this looks like... Where is this from? Uh, Transform.iemma.net. Global leaders pledged to build back better with circular economy. Uh, anyways, all of this points back and uh, to like the United Nations. Yeah, the, the UN at 75, now is the time to build back better, United Nations. That's a United Nations article. Um, Medium, the policy slogan, build back better, has an interesting backstory. So this is, this has been um, well, the, planned. We know the elites a, don't, the rules don't apply to them. Right. And so where I'm going with this, so all of this, building back better, has to do with changing things um and and by shutting down our economies again it's tanking the american economy and it's going to bring us down to the level you you've got all always of these been a goal by the globalists, right by the so way. and and donald trump is the one guy that was kind of standing in the way of all this but you have all these globalists and we've talked about this before meeting in davos in january um, by the way there's plenty of republicans who are global oh absolutely I mean, Absolutely, I mean, yeah. the, you know, the Bush family, Henry the, Kissinger, yeah, Henry yeah. Kissinger. I mean, yeah, list goes on and on. I mean, right. of of Republicans who are globalists and in the media, George as well. W. Bush. Well, and I George mean George H. W. Bush. Quite yeah. frankly, they're all globalists. I think to different levels. Right. I, mean, I don't think that uh, President Bush was a was a George W. Anyway, I don't think that. I think he did defy globalists at some areas, whether it was environmental stuff or foreign policy, but uh-huh. ultimately, anytime you knock down barriers, anytime that you are dependent on other nations, mm-hmm. that was something he didn't do. Anytime you have an open floodgate yeah. of immigration, you are changing your own country and American exceptionalism, mm-hmm. which is something I believe in, Absolutely. erodes away. But, right. but who benefits? It's, it's the global people that... Mm-hmm. In, in, a, in a building somewhere that we can't touch. Right. Okay, we can't elect them in, we can't elect them out. Huh. Okay, you know, that's, that's what's, uh, you know, the Clintons are a part of that. Yes. That's where it, it sounds like there's a boogeyman. 
It, it, well, I mean, but, there I mean, kind of is. Right, it's there name is, is but capitalism. There is, but you can't put your finger exactly well, on who that is. It's capitalism, and anybody that Capitalism's believes in capitalism is the enemy right. of, the, of them. Globalists don't want a, a, a free and fair economy. No. No, they want to uh, manipulate. But, but that's what the Great Reset's about. Uh, this is by Klaus Schwab, the founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum. So you can go out to the World Economic Forum site, read all about it. Uh, this article is called, Now is the Time for a Great Reset. And down here, here's what it says about it. COVID-19 lockdowns may be gradually easing. Really, are they? Uh, but anxiety about the world's social and economic prospects is only intensifying. There's a good reason to worry. A sharp economic downturn has already begun, so they're projecting this. And No, they're we, causing it. Right, they're causing it. They're, yeah, but, they're but, working both ends but of But, Jay, it. Yes. in more ways than lockdowns. Let me get to that after you're done Okay. Here. And we could be facing the worst depression since the 1930s. But while this outcome is likely, it is not unavoidable. To begin a, or to achieve a better outcome, the world must act jointly and swiftly to revamp all aspects of our societies and economies, from education to social contracts and working conditions. Every country from the United States to China must participate, and every industry from oil and gas to tech must be transformed. In short, we need a great reset of capitalism. Hmm. And what they're looking at is stakeholder capitalism, which is Chinese capitalism or communism. Yes. That, that is watch the Animal goal. Farm, and that's what they want. That is the goal. They want the pigs, and it's a great analogy. They want the pigs mm -hmm. to be in charge. Right. We're all their serfs. And they're using COVID to do this, though. But it's, you know, and it's because of these lockdowns, it's going to hurt our economy, and we are going to go into a Great Depression if we don't come out of this and right, stop but, it. But we're going to go into a second recession, and I'm going to tell you why. First off, the housing market is going to collapse. And it, it, it may not collapse to, and in a day. Yeah. It may not collapse even in a year. But, Jay... For the last eight months, I'll just use Minnesota, I'm sure it's the same everywhere, has banned foreclosures and evictions. Mm -hmm. Okay? Of course, their contracts, private contracts, right. between... Now, look, again, I, I would encourage people to work with their landlords or their banks. Yeah. I'm sure right now they could work something out, but I'm mm -hmm. going to tell you something. When that gets lifted, and it's going to, at yes. some point, yes. you're going to see a rash... Huh. Of evictions and foreclosures. There are estimates that 60% mm -hmm. of Minneapolis renters are behind on their rent. I don't know if that's wow. true. I've seen 30, I've seen 50, I've mm -hmm. seen. At some point, okay, some are going to get evicted. Some, it's inevitable. People aren't working, and, or they're working less. Right. I mean, it's, but again, they're being forced to work less. Exactly. So they're being pushed further into poverty. And then you add to it people who, are behind on their home payments for mm -hmm. whatever reason. Some, some, of it, some of it happens anyway, yeah. even in good economic times. But we haven't gone through that yet. Right. And we're going to. Yes. And we could go through that for years. Because mm -hmm. if we learned anything about the housing bubble in 09 or 08 or 10 or wherever it was, yeah. it took probably five years yeah. to get out of that or more. So you're not, there's no way we're not, and I'm going to tell you something else. We're going to not only have that, yeah. we're going to have inflation occur at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because you can't borrow money, print money, mm -hmm. have foreign bankers buy it back yes. without devaluing that currency. Mm -hmm. Look it up. Yep. I, if anybody who does not think that's going to happen, okay, look up. The Weimar Republic, look up. If you want a less extreme example, mm -hmm. look at what happened to the American government in the American Revolution, yep. the Confederate government in, in the South, the War of 1812. You go look up any time that printing money yep. has been the solution that, that somebody has come up with. And there are always consequences to that. And one yeah. of the consequences is is devaluing of that currency. Mm -hmm. Venezuela went from driving luxury cars to uh, not being able to buy bread, eating uh, animals out of the zoo. How about Greece? What yeah. they've gone, they're still oh, going through it. Absolutely. I mean, if you if you tell you what, if you want if you want to all bring us down, let's all invest in Greek bonds. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great way for all of us to go down together. Yes. Okay. So 
Um, we are not, we haven't even started on those. Now, look, that doesn't mean everybody's going to get foreclosed on. It doesn't mean some people aren't going to go back to work. No doubt that's going to happen. Yeah. But we have not started. On that uh, I'm yet. telling you this, though. I mean, under Trump, I say things rebound and, and, and they get better, at, at least for a time. If, if, if under Biden, he's in on this. He is in and all in on this great reset. He's bringing back the Obama yeah, era but, people. But he doesn't know that. He, he don't know. He's that. bringing back the Obama era people for for his appointees, people who are globalists, people who who are working with this group to see the great reset. And and he'll like fortify this deep state that is going out with like civil society 2.0 and and causing upheaval in countries so that they are able to get these countries into this new system. It's scary. And then you got guys like Governor Walls who tweets out five hours ago, new dozens of landmarks across Minnesota are lighting up purple at 5 p.m. tonight in memory of Minnesotans we've lost to COVID-19 and healthcare workers on the front lines of this battle. Most of the people we've lost in this state are because of you putting them into long-term care. <laughs> Let's light up buildings. That's gonna, that'll bring them back. My favorite one was earlier in the day, and I gave him a kind of a nasty response. He talked about uh, donating to some cause or something, how generous Minnesotans are. It's like, well, it's kind of hard to be. You locked down the economy. Yeah. The very next day, you asked for donations to yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, 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 look, I, I'll tell you another thing I'm worried about is I'm a big small town fan. Yeah. And how many of these small towns are going to rebound from this? Because that's a target of this. Great Absolutely. Reset too. It's, it's a target of yep. globalists. Small businesses, they small don't towns. Want, they don't want independent towns. Independent. Mm -hmm. They want everybody to be a, a, a carbon copy of each other. Yes. No town can have That's the town. only place they want carbon. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you call it? Uh, uh, no, you're right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know what to call it when they're all just the same. Yes. Uh, but they all want everybody... Hurt. By the way... Think about what was what was being pushed by these same politicians just before COVID. Higher density. Yep. You know, closer together. Absolutely. Uh, sh living over shops and yeah. restaurants. <laughs> Why isn't anybody challenging that formula? Mm -hmm. Saying, no, herding you into transit. <laughs> That's exactly what... You know, they're now arguing the f complete opposite right now. Yeah. That, you know, because again, why? Because you can control people. When they're all in one place, mm -hmm. they can be controlled. When you take away their car, when you take, you know, you take away their freedom, they can all be controlled then. Yes. So, but I, look, I just go back to this, this local and for, look, here's the truth. This, I think, has been the truth the whole time. Mm -hmm. Walls has no means to enforce this. No. Zero. Okay, if there's not a city, a sheriff, a police department, whatever that goes along with him, mm -hmm. he can't do anything. Yeah. And Joe Biden, when and if he becomes president, cannot force a lockdown. He has mm -hmm. no mechanism to do that. He can't threat funding because he doesn't control the funding. Yeah. Okay. He he has no law enforcement agency unless he attacks the country with tanks. Right. Uh, you know, I mean, he won't even secure our own border. So the I I mean, I think it's a joke when Biden talks about a national lockdown. Yeah. It's out of his mind. I mean, he says he's not going to do it, but he said that to get elected. Yeah. So I mean, he's like I said, he's filled. People around him with people who all support that group think, that same mentality mm -hmm. and all that. So, I mean, I look, I'm a, I'm a pessimist on this. I don't know where you stand, but I'm, I'm going to fight it, but I'm a pessimist on it. And I think, I think we're in for years of this, uh, of COVID being the excuse for yeah. this or that. Um, and like I've said before, I mean... Many, many things have to happen, but one thing that has to happen is we have got to stop printing money, and we have got to lift this evictions and foreclosures thing. The longer we put this off, okay, the longer this is going to go on. Mm -hmm. I mean, just think, if that moratorium is there for another six months, 
<sighs> which it could be. It could be. I mean, wh- what happens after a year and a half if somebody doesn't pay their rent? Mm-hmm. Okay, and I suppose the landlord, I suppose the city wants their property taxes, right? Right. They're not going to give him a break. Mortgage company <laughs> wants their payment. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's just going to be, it, it's a Weimar Republic merry-go-round. Right. You know, like they can't pay their reparate, you know, Germany couldn't, you know, I mean, you know, we're back to that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I don't know, either these people aren't very smart or they're cunning, much more cunning than I give them credit for. They are cunning. Yes. I mean, when you, it, it looks not smart. And it looks like it's not in our best interest. Well, it's not in our best interest. It's in the interest no, it's in of the their globalists. best interest. Yeah. Yes, so they can remake the world in their image. That's boy, that's scary when you're talking about Tim Walls. Yes. Make the make the world back in my image, people might go for it. But <laughs> his image? Oh boy. <laughs> I don't know, Jay. I mean, I'm just gonna predict a uh three or four month Shutdown. I mean, that's what I'm going to yeah. predict. I mean, of some way, shape, or form. Because uh, I, I can't see after four weeks everything just going back to where it was. I just can't see that. I think that it's it's going to at least be three or four. I don't know if it'll be all the way out to June like it was with the I last I don't think shutdown. it'll be because people I think we'll have the get, vaccine in March or April. People will get tired of... People well, are, and, and that's the thing. People I think are it'll already s- sick of it. Start rolling out... Um, I think that uh, it's going to take to hit mass production and get in people's hands. It will be, you know, it will be March or April. But then you're going to have people that are like, "How many people you have can't already forced had me this. to take that? You can't force me to take yeah, that." And some. and he's gonna he's gonna turn those screws harder because he's gonna want everybody to take it. He's like, uh, I, "We have people that are rebelling and not taking this. Things aren't safe." I, I can't, in good conscience, open this up until I know we're all safe. Boy, wouldn't that be something? And I don't mean something in a mm-hmm. positive way. No, but but don't you see, foresee something like that could it, happen? It could. I mean, it could. I mean, um, to me, I don't think that that's... Uh, I mean, all these Democrats I don't, said I don't, they weren't going to take it in the first place because it was Trump's vaccine. Yeah. Well, I don't I, think I don't think they can though. I don't think they can say that a, a vaccine is a saving grace and then refuse to take it. And I, I yeah. also feel like if there's that many people that will have herd immunity, there's that many people who are asymptomatic. There is no reason to force the vaccine. Mm-hmm. I think you're going to see a lot of people take it, especially at first. Yeah. And then I think everybody else is going to see how it plays out. Mm-hmm. I mean, do these people have bad but side? But that's of- the thing. It'll be the people, they're going to put the screws to us because there are people who want to wait it out and see what happens. Jay, you're depressing me. Now, I know what doesn't depress me. You know what doesn't depress me? What? The sign-off sermon. That just well, that, that never depresses me. Half the time I fall true? asleep. But what? it's okay. <laughs> it's still... <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but, but, you know, uh, we'll get back on our, our, our regular stuff next week. I mean, but this is... Keep an eye on these county and city attorneys. and You and I are going to have to have mm-hmm. an update on this if anything happens. Yeah. Uh, because nobody else is going to cover this except us. No. But ladies and gentlemen here at Community Solutions, I present... Wheeling and dealing, styling and profiling. The women love him. The men are all jealous of him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're laying it Jet on flying, thick today. Limousine riding. The king of sting, the master of disaster. With the sign off sermon, ladies and gentlemen, I once again present Jason Bradley. Oh. I think I always start these things like that. I sigh really heavy and I just like. It's an Al Bundy sigh. That's it is. Yeah. He, he, you, know, he, you knock on the door, you know Peg will be there. That's a sign. <laughs> you know, Minnesota, we've been talking about this stuff for eight months now. And I'd say even before that, because before the shutdowns came, 
we kind of had our eyes on China and what was going on as far back as January, and we saw there was trouble on the horizon. And boy, has 2020 been a year. I don't think 2021 is going to be a whole lot better, unfortunately. But you know what? It doesn't have to go down the way that they want it to go down. It doesn't have to go according to their plan. No, they, they want to take America down, and they want to take it down a number of pegs. They want it to look like some of the countries that uh, aren't faring so well down in Latin America, because then they can make progress. Once we're out of the way, they're able to put in their system of communism or uh, stakeholder capitalism, as they like to call it, which is no different than, than Chinese capitalism, no different than what they put in in Germany back in the 1930s and 40s. Oh, it's the same thing. Believe it. Where the state is going to have partial to complete ownership or they'll let you own a business, but they're going to tell you exactly how to run it. And they're going to tell you what you can do, what you can't do. Oh, that car isn't clean enough. It's thrown out too much carbon. You can't drive that car. You can't travel from here to there because it's bad for the environment. Oh, but we can because our work is so very important. I tell you, there are so many of us that have bought into a program that was not as advertised. And a whole lot of these people are not waking up. They refuse to see what's going on. Now, I blame a whole lot of that on our media. The fact that they have been lying about all of this and covering things up and they haven't been talking to the people about what has been going on in government some guardians they are but some of those people believe the media and then there are others who don't believe the media at all and disaffected they go wait they don't know what's going on either we're in difficult times but it doesn't have to be bleak. It doesn't have to read out of the pages of 1984, Brave New World. It doesn't have to be the fountainhead. This dystopian world that they're creating, it doesn't have to come to fruition. No, not as long as we as Americans remember who we are. We were put here we, we came to this land seeking religious freedom so that we might be able to be a free people, not a people who live under a king, but people who are free to make their own choices, who are free to say their own words, and they don't have some government thought police telling them, oh, that's a violation because you don't agree with me. We don't have to agree with you. We don't have to agree with you. Now, good laws, yeah, we need to follow those. But laws that violate our conscience, no. Nah, those are not moral laws. Laws that you make that violate the Constitution are not moral laws. And we do not have to abide. Now, I'm not calling for all-out anarchy. But what I am calling for is for people to take a stand. They want to intimidate you in St. Paul. They want to intimidate you in D.C. Do not let yourself be intimidated. No. These are schoolyard bullies that want to punch you in the nose and laugh. Then come and take your lunch money tomorrow. Well, guess what? You don't get my lunch money. You ain't punching me in the nose. You turn around, you go home. Because I will not sit down, and I will not be intimidated by your threats to prosecute me if I say that I want to get together with my family. 
for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, if I want to worship in my church, if I want to sing and play my guitar, I will do what I can to protect the people around me. I have a brain in my head. I'll put on a mask if I need to put on a mask. I will stay distant from people. If I feel sick, I'm not going to come out of my house. But you know what? I'm not going to let you tell me I can't live. I have three God-given rights. One is a right to life. One is a light, light, a right to liberty. And the third is a right to the pursuit of happiness. And without those, you put yourself in the place of God. And that I will not suffer. And a government that does not protect those rights is no good government at all. Do you want to come after us? Here we are. Here we are. I'm not backing down. I'm not quitting. I'm not going to go hide in a hole. That's what you want. You want me to go hide in a hole? No, I will not. And you know what? There's a whole bunch of Minnesotans like you guys out there listening to this podcast that are not going to go hide in a hole either. There are those of you in city councils, in county boards right now that I know will not abide. That will not prosecute your fellow neighbors. It's not going to happen. It will not go down that way. We will not go down into that dark night of despotism. This is not Venezuela. We're not dealing with Hugo Chavez. We're not dealing with Fidel Castro. No. This is America. No. This is America. And we have freedom. We have the freedom to make good decisions. Say we have the freedom to make bad decisions. I encourage you, all y'all, to freely make the good decisions so that they don't have the opportunity to come down on us. So what are we going to do? The time is nigh. Once we lose freedom, we don't get it back. So who's ready to sacrifice a little comfort for making their last stand? Because I'll tell you this. If Biden's put in office and we lose the Senate, we lose America. It's done. It's done. That's why we need everybody. All hands on deck. During this time, because I'm sick and tired of government saying that they have the right to control my life. I didn't elect you to control my life. I elected you to protect the Constitution, and that's it. Keep us safe. Keep our borders safe. Keep us financially afloat. Not send us into the Davy Jones locker of economic doom so many of you from both parties are derelict in your duty and you have sat and you have allowed debt to accrue and you have allowed spending to go out of control you have sat and raised our taxes you have put in more restrictive laws you have torn us apart morally I cannot in good conscience sit by and watch you do that. I'm calling every single last Minnesotan heck. I'm calling every last single American who believes in maintaining a good America. A shining city on a hill for all to see the light and the life of freedom to come together. And let's do something amazing. Let's change history. 
Get a hold of us. C-O-M-M Solutions, M-N at gmail.com. That's C-O-M-M Solutions, M-N at gmail.com. If you are interested, we'll bind together and we can put together a force of people to be reckoned with. And I don't mean picking up arms and throwing fists. No, I mean we march in and we do what we've been destined to do. And we govern with goodness, kindness, and love. But we don't allow anything to break down our Constitution. Because we're not going down like that. That's all we got for this week. You get a hold of us. You pass this around to everybody you know. Because they need to understand what's coming. They need to be shaken out of their slumber. I hope you're shaken out of your slumber. Because the time is now. There's no more time left. Clock. The buzzer's sounding in like two seconds, guys. We got one time out. We got, we got a half-court shot. The, the, So we got to make this happen. I don't say that to, to be discouraging. But I, I say that to get you to understand the times that we live in. It's now or never. Do you want to be able to tell your grandchildren I stood? Or do you want to, when they ask you what happened, do you want to say, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't stand and I should have. It's time. And we're here every week doing this because we care. And we know that there's enough of you good people out there to do something about it. We love you, Minnesota. But now it's your turn to get to work.